Hello, everyone, and welcome back to MF Uncensored. Don't forget, if you guys are listening to us on the go, you can find us on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, basically anywhere you can get a podcast. You can also find more of our content on our website, themisfitfaction.com. There you find links to not only this show, but some of our other shows like the Multiverse Fancast and Cinematic Adventures. As always, I'm one of your hosts, Paul, and it is my pleasure, my honor, my excitement, my joy to be introducing today's guest. Now, just a little bit of background. We set up this appointment, this interview, probably like a month or month and a half ago. Like it was a while ago, to the point where I I went online today. I was like checking my calendar. I was like, I'm so excited for this. Oh my god! I hope she. I hope like it's still happening. So I better. I, I'm like the worst with stuff like that because I just get so excited. But that is the wonderful, the pleasant, and the psychic Alexis Duncan. Don Alexis, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm so good. I'm so excited to be chatting with you. This is like. Again, I, I mentioned it in the pre-show to her, you are our second psychic. And yes. we we actually had, uh, for those of you guys who've been listening to us for a while or watching us for a while, we had our good friend Daniel on. He came on twice because we had so much fun talking with him. And I am super excited to kind of get your perspective and what you do and what you do maybe differently or the same or anything like that. Because in this incredible world that we live in, just no, everything can happen. And I love to kind of explore other things. So really quick, I know I kind of teed it up already, but can you tell our listeners what you do? <laughs> yes, I'm a psychic and intuitive life coach. And mostly the clients that I work with, I help what I call baby psychics make their development a little bit less overwhelming and a little bit clearer and easier. So yeah. All right. So baby psychic, I'm obviously not an actual baby. I'm just going to click. That's my <laughs> own clarification. I have to say it out loud. So is that, are you're talking about like people who maybe have a certain ability or affinity and you kind of get them started. Is that correct? So, yeah. So a lot of times I've, I started out mostly doing psychic services and kind of like using my, my intuition as part of my coaching. And I found that naturally the clients that came to me were people who were already engaged in some of these things they had some of the psychic ability but they found it a little confusing a little overwhelming and so they really wanted someone who was an expert and would safely guide them through that process of figuring it out setting up boundaries getting comfortable with interpretation of the information that's coming at them you know those kinds of things so very cool so like Let's we'll take a step back, right? Because sure. there's a lot of, I don't want to say misconceptions, but a lot of conceptions about what a psychic <laughs> is. A lot of people they they have these, they have this image in their minds, right? Like crystal balls, and you know, like some people think that it's a total sham. Other people are very highly invested in it. So for yeah. you, like when you say that you're a psychic, and somebody's like, well, what does that mean? How? What's the best way for you to explain it to them? So. I would say that somebody who's a psychic is someone that has extrasensory perceptions, right? This is where you're engaging with the world using more than your, your basic senses. So typically psychics use several of the, what I would call the clairs or what the industry would call the clairs. And the most common are, there's there's four common ones and those are clairvoyance, clear seeing, clairsentience, clear feeling, clear audience, clear hearing, and clear cognizance, clear knowing. And I would say that everybody has the wiring for this, but everybody doesn't use it. You know, it's just like we can all in theory play basketball, but we're not all Kobe Bryant. We're not Steve Curry. We're not going to be going out there, and, you know, making millions and millions of dollars for this. But some of us might like to play a pickup game with our friends from the neighborhood, you know, and then others have no idea what the rules are and are not interested in that. And it's all fine. It doesn't matter. It's just that it's helpful to have a space where we can talk about it where it's safe, where it's comfortable, and people can pursue it in a careful and thoughtful way. See, I like the way that you describe it, how it's not like a lot of people think, oh, it's psychic. I can see the future, like all these good things. And like, I, I know all these things. You're you're approaching it like something that has to be handled very responsibly. And it's, it's a very fresh take. Because um, obviously, there are plenty of people that are 
psychic, I put in quotes. And <laughs> you know, like yeah. whenever uh, my, my wife, producer Melanie, as she is fondly known on the show, she she's very, I don't want to say into it, but she's, she has a very big interest in, you know, things of this sort. And every time we pass like a palm reader or something like that, I'm like, Hey, you want to get your palm read and, you know, lose $10 and she'll, she'll tell me to shut up. But <laughs> so for you though, I, I like how you present it where it's more, Hey, anybody can, or potentially can have this ability to use it, but it's also about boundaries and responsibility and learning. So how did you start with all of this? Yeah, well, it's, it's tricky because I was born this way. It's hereditary and it's not all like this level is not necessarily hereditary, but for me it was. And so I, with my parents who we mentioned before we started the show, my parents are both ordained ministers. And so I grew up in a space where I didn't have the expertise to guide me and I'm also a zenial so I grew up before the internet was like a thing mm -hmm. <laughs> so we didn't really have I didn't really have the resources or the you know the experts that could help me in the way that you have now you know you have there's a lot of information now oh, that yeah. you can access but growing up I didn't have that so typically when someone is is born psychic they'll have an experience around year seven where they'll have it 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 really it takes the sh shape of your particular tradition so if you grew up in a like christian dominated place with that background you might you'd probably see jesus mm -hmm. if you grew up jewish you might see like moses or miriam if you grew up buddhist you might see buddha you know it just it just depends on who you are most receptive to how spirit first like says hey how's it going <laughs> and so for me at seven I saw Jesus you know like I had this interaction with Jesus and it was you know it was very warm and cozy and I was like oh this is great and and at the time I was like yes this happened and also I was like but did it mm -hmm. <laughs> you know because even from like childhood if you're you know if you're watching like superhero shows like the x-men for example you know like per, we're talking about like professor xavier like yep. he's like you know he's always putting his hand in, <laughs> and then he's always like i'm so so sorry yep yep no, I'm, I'm right there, <laughs> right, know, there. This, I'm right there with you this is like this is a thing right and then these people get attacked for their abilities and you see this so you see this from a young age and you're like am i or do I need to go see a shrink yeah. for this? You know, this is like, this is a very stigmatized thing. So not having the resources and not having the supports to learn about it, you know, I was really, I was just going blind. And then like each part of your physical development kind of corresponds with psychic development. Mm -hmm. So puberty sucked. Oh, I can't even imagine. It sucks to begin with. It sucks no matter what, but it extra sucks because you're like, you're feeling things physically for the first time, right? Like you're having these big feelings. You're with other people who are having these big feelings. Hormones are going crazy. And suddenly you're getting another layer of information and you haven't figured out how you feel in your own self, right. let alone getting information from some other source. Like is my first impression of this person that they are really dangerous for me? Or is this first impression that I'm getting that they're an awesome person and I should spend more time with them? Like, so, you know, I made a lot of mistakes and on um, I misinterpreted things. And fortunately, you know, as I went on, I came to like realize, okay, this feeling <laughs> is actually that and this feeling is that and now I can kind of cobble together things but it wasn't until I was much older you know into my 20s that I started to like get like okay there's definitely something going on here and this is definitely like I'm not crazy this is happening but I wasn't, I still wasn't like embracing it and so it wasn't until I was in my my 30s and I wrote, I wrote and published this world religion curriculum. And then I was doing inner an interfaith devotional at the same time. And so for that, I was reading all of these religious texts and I got into this like super meditative state. And I had this 
big like intense vision that was like okay you gotta you gotta embrace this now we've we've we have work to do <laughs> and so I was like okay I guess that's that's what's happening now and so I spirit sort of put me through a crash course in how to get control of everything and and I learned how to set up spiritual boundaries and I learned how to you know each each kind of Claire developed in different ways and now you know I have control over spirit like I you know some people they're like oh like that's so scary like that would be so scary and I'm like no I have more control over spirit than I do in the physical world it's right. great <laughs> so that's that's so much to unpack I got so into it I, I'm a terrible host I should have been like wait hold on let me discuss no now I gotta go back through it <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Own, <laughs> no I, I love it because like I said during our pre-show I, I told you how excited I was for this because I can I can tell when I get an like an email or or somebody reaches out like what kind of excitement they're bringing and I just kind of match it so I'm a terrible host I'm the worst but let's go back so you mentioned that both your parents were ordained ministers yeah what, and obviously one of my questions that I wanted to ask during the course of the show was how this sort of thing presented to yourself like if I was the child of two devout Catholics and I was like I just saw Buddha obviously they would not handle it well so yeah for you though, you did, you saw Jesus. Yeah. So how did your parents respond to like, when you were like, Hey, this is what's going on with me. And it's like, here we are. I didn't tell them. Really? No, I didn't tell them. Was it just a fear thing or just maybe like, no, hey, you know, I, as a child, I didn't have a lot of faith in, <laughs> ironically, I didn't have a lot of faith in authority figures to help me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was like, well, I just got to figure this out. <laughs> At seven years old, just like I got At this. seven year olds, I've got this. I've got this. I'm just, just see, talking to Jesus. Just seeing over here, Jesus. Yeah, no big deal. No big deal at all. <laughs> but it, yeah. I love it because I, if anybody's listened to the show for long enough, they know that my my view on religion is very strange. I firmly like I was raised Lutheran, and which is, for yeah. those of you guys who aren't sure, it's an offshoot of uh, Catholicism. It's a lot of the same basic principles. You know, your your Jesus, your commandments. Went to Sunday school every every week put on my stupid button up polos and all that when I was, you know, 12, got confirmed. And then my parents were like, Hey, you are confirmed. It is now up to you how you want to express your religion. And I said, I don't know what I really believe in as a child. So now I'm at this point in my life where I believe that there is something so much greater than me out there, but I, I don't know if I could ever quantify it. When I leave this mortal coil and I meet my maker and they're like, Hey, I'm actually Jesus. I'd be like, Oh, Jesus, like, or, Hey, I'm Buddha. Oh my God, look at you. That you were, I'm just open to whatever. So I like that you you're saying that when people have this ability, it presents in the way that's most comfortable for them. I really enjoyed hearing that. Yeah. Well, so, and, yeah. and I think it's important to, you know, people will say like, Oh, this is how spirit is. And I'm like, bullshit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like anybody who says that they know how it is i'm like you should immediately be like no <laughs> so, so now and, i see you i see you at like some of those like charlatan shows where it's yeah. like i'm thinking of a name with the w I, I just see you going in the background bullshit <laughs> yeah because because the thing is we are all so different mm -hmm. we all have the like what we are able to receive what like our life experience our expectations and and just where we are like spirit forms to us so right. that's why you get so many different interpretations so many different experiences so so when somebody says like oh this is how it is i'm like well that's how it is for you mm -hmm. and that's awesome because that's where you are that's where you can receive it and that's fine but my experience is going to be radically different because it's going to be reflective of me mm -hmm. and that's okay like i mean i would say that like the everything in reality everything in spirit it has like like a core mm -hmm. right but just it's just like putting on different coats or different costumes you know for different people like that that's just it's just easier for someone who's growing up christian to 
interact with Christian symbols. Right. And it's just easier for someone who's growing up Hindu to interact with Hindu symbols. It just makes sense. And, the, and it goes even further. Like it's where you, if you read any like near death experiences, mm-hmm. it can be so different. And people build, you know, these, these people have these profound experiences. I'm like, that's awesome for you right but that is not necessarily how somebody else is going to experience it and you can't draw conclusions about what spirit is like for all of spirit that way that's that's not how this game works so so yeah you know somebody probably is seeing fairies and somebody is probably seeing dragons and all these you know you you read a lot of stuff and you're like whoa and honestly i'm like whoa (laughs) but but also it's like it's okay you know that's okay like if that's where you are and that's how you you can receive this information and and this wisdom that is available in spirit then cool that's good i'm very curious what i would see in in my own personal case (laughs) Um, i i'm firmly of the opinion that it'll either be odin because i you know Growing up, I wanted to learn a little bit more about my culture and like where I come from. I'm I'm Italian on my father's side. I'm Swedish and Norwegian on my mom's side. I wanted to learn. I knew a little bit about I knew plenty about Christianity and Catholicism and Lutheranism. Lutheranism? Being Lutheran. Yeah, yeah I'm sure. Uh, so I was like, let's let's look at my my mom's side. And you know, I love the I love the pagan tradition and stuff like that. So I don't subscribe to anything, but I'm curious. Maybe maybe I'll see Batman for all I know. Like just who you knows? Could. So for you, <laughs> I don't know how I'd react in the middle of the night. I'd just wake up <laughs> my wife and be like, Batman's in our room. Just, just go back to sleep. You yeah, know? I don't know either. That would be a little, yeah. A little intense. <laughs> but so let's fast forward. You, you're in your 20s. You had just done this multi-religion classwork and you had this grand epiphany. What was 30s. your, oh, in your 30s, excuse me. Yeah. So what was your next step? Like you have this epiphany, like, hey, you need to embrace this. What did you do next? Well, I mean, it was really like figuring it out like piece by piece, but, but also (laughs) how can you explain when it's like, when you see like one of those movies or something where the, the main character just suddenly has all this extra stuff going on. Mm -hmm. It's like that. (laughs) Like actually. Oh God. (laughs) So, you know, you're like, maybe you just had a glass of wine and you're walking up the stairs and all of a sudden, like in the middle of walking up the stairs, like there's this like spirit that's like trying to interact with you. And like, all of a sudden you're like seeing all this stuff and you're like, whoa, you know, why was this? I'm just trying to have, you know, a chill, like Friday evening, like, let's not do that. Um, you know, or like you could be walking down the street and you are trying to like interact with what is physically there, but also the layer of spirit because everything has a spiritual signature. So there's like, (laughs) and of course, living things have very active stuff. So there's the plants, there's the land spirits, there's the emotional stuff that's been happening on the sidewalk you know in the houses and it's all like blaring at you going into places like a antique shop are a disaster those are so terrible because you have really deeply energetic things coming from a lot of different places and it's dirty energetically okay you know if if you you have to think about like these are old things Mm -hmm. that people have had strong relationships to i mean like jewelry these are things that people are wearing you know furniture something that people use all the time and so it's like carrying all that stuff and it's all in one place jumbled together. And it's like, it, it actually makes me physically sick when oh, I wow. go to one of those places. So I, I have to be careful that I do 
some preparation before I go in and I don't stay in very long. But an, a museum, on the other hand, is not like that because <laughs> there's a lot of care into the objects. There's a lot of energetic cleaning because there's a lot of physical cleaning and, and physical maintenance. And so it's a lot easier to be like, oh, I can just look at this object in a psychic way and just interact with this and then this one and so forth. So it's a lot more comfortable in a museum, for example. So, but like, I, I did you know, when you start out, you don't know these things. Mm -hmm. And so you're trying to like figure out, okay, what do I need to do? So I don't make, so I'm not like exhausted all the time and making myself physically sick. And the thing is you have to set up boundaries. You have to set up rules. And in the same way that spirit fits you, you can call the shots, you know, I, like I say, like, I'm only going to interact with spirit when I want, how I want, where I want. So you can't just come up to me when I'm having coffee with my friend and start trying to have a conversation. <laughs> that's, that's not happening. <laughs> right. So I was going to ask about that because you mentioned having boundaries several times and yeah. so that's something that you actually had to dictate for yourself. How did you like hey, these are my rules. This is what I'm going to stick to. Was it trial and error? Was it something that just kind of came to you? Well, like there is, there is a lot of conversation about that. And like, just casually in spiritual spaces, they'll say, oh, you need to have like fencing or you need to have wards or something like that. So you know, they'll, and they, they'll use different words for that. I don't want to get into too much jargon because it'll yeah, yeah. be really confusing, but, but basically, yeah, I have like, I set up energetic fencing around my bedrooms, around my kids' rooms, around the house. And then I also have like uh, a bubble, you could say like around me. And then I have beings in spirit that act like a goon squad for me. <laughs> That's and, awesome. and and they you know if if somebody if or if something like gets a little too like excited you know they just take care of it for me <laughs> and and then I also have rules that I had to figure out like I, I that that wine you know story that I told earlier okay. that actually happened to me and I was like this is not you know I don't want to take like I don't want to have like you know, a sedative tea or something like take like chamomile tea and then suddenly have a vision like just randomly. I, I want to only when I want to do it. So that's literally, that is exactly what I told spirit. I was like, this is how I want it to be. You know, I want to have complete control over this, you know, and when I initiate, that's fine. Unless, and I, I specifically gave this loophole Unless it is important and good for me to know something and you feel that, you know, you know that, that I need to have that. So there are some times when my guides will initiate and tell me something, but, but it is rare. And when it does happen, it's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, this is the big thing. <laughs> So, you know, it's funny, like when, when people talk about like these kind of situations where you're interacting with a spirit world, you, you talk about it in an incredibly positive way. And that's like really uplifting and I love to hear it. So, but then you hear like other stories, like, or movies, movies are the best. I love movies where it's like, like, and what's, what's the creepy doll? An Annabelle? Annabelle? Annabelle, yeah. yeah. Like she's got a spirit attached to her or possessed, you know, some sort. Have mm -hmm. you had a negative spirit interaction? Like, I'm not talking like horror movie style. Yeah, where... yeah, yeah. Well, I, <laughs> so there's two things. One is some of my, like my fear level is not normal, apparently. I can imagine. Um, like, like, I don't, I've described some of the visions that I've had to people and they've been like, oh my God, that is so terrifying. And I'm like, is it? I didn't feel like that. Hmm. I thought it was interesting. <laughs> so like, so like, so like some of my like normal stuff is very Guillermo del Toro. So okay. like, right. like that's, you know, like Pan's Labyrinth. I'm like, oh, okay. You know, Hellboy. I'm like, oh, okay. You know, like, yeah, that's like pretty normal. But like for other, for some people, they would see that stuff and they'd be like, this is terrifying. And right. I'm, and I'm like, well, that it's a good thing that I'm seeing it and not you. But, but that stuff isn't actually scary. That's just symbolic to mm. communicate something, you know, every, anything that you see in spirit is always, 
always, I use this word intentionally, digital. So it's, so you're getting multiple layers of information on purpose with every communication. And so anything that is shown to you is not literal. It's always symbolic. So anything that's scary is not about trying to scare you necessarily. It's about communicating something. Mm -hmm. The stuff that's actually scary, I don't, I don't interact with at this point in time. And there's a reason they can't handle me. And your goon squad. Well, so there was a time at the beginning of like, like very soon after I had embraced this, where some spirits would come to me and they were dark. Mm. And what I would do is I would send them light. I would basically like shoot them with light and the spirits that were ready for it, they would allow it to transform them. And they would change and I would see them change. And the ones that weren't would <laughs> run away. And, and I would say, you know, this goes to experience in general, but like we choose if we're going to be in a, in a hellish state or a heaven state. Mm -hmm. And it's, and we choose that now, but we also choose it in spirit. And so, you know, the, the choices that we're making now, they shape who we are and they shape our experience now and they will shape our experience later. And it's, it's every choice. It's, you know, it's not like, it's not like, oh, you're, you choose once and then you're good. No, that's not how this works. You continue to choose, you continue to act. And if you've been choosing one thing over and over and over again, it makes it really difficult for you to choose something different. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you need, you know, someone else to help you kind of like pull you out of that and shift your trajectory, which is what I was doing with that, that energy. So, you know, that's, that's kind of, it, it's, this, this is getting very theological, but this is, I love it. Oh, that's, bring it. <laughs> that's, that's how I, that's how I would, you know, talk about heaven or hell or how, like how we experience those things. I mean, like, yeah, there is the full range. Um, but you know, how we experience this stuff, it, it comes down to how we choose to experience things and how we, how we choose to be. Mm -hmm. So I don't choose that <laughs> and I haven't chosen it. There, there was a time before I had embraced my abilities where I had some experiences and I would say there was they they were they were scary because i didn't have the tools or the knowledge and also because i felt like there was the desire for me to be on one side or the other okay and so there was a little bit of like fighting over me i don't recommend that <laughs> But in the end, you know, who we are and how and the choices that we make that that's the most important thing. And so, you know, when somebody comes and they're like, oh, like devil's advocate or like, you know, I don't know, there's like so many different horror films we could talk about. But like, you don't have to worry about those things like those are not that's not that's not a thing. I mean, like it is, but it isn't, you know, like it, like you you do want to be in a good place mentally when mm. you start down this path like i would not recommend someone you know if you have untreated mental illness stuff don't don't be doing that that's a terrible plan you know if you're going through a hard time you know you need to get right with yourself first before you're pursuing this because whatever you bring you're bringing it and that's going to shape what you experience. Right. right. So, so you really have to be, you have to be kind of, I'm going to say clean in order to, to really have a, a positive experience, but there is no reason why you shouldn't have mm -hmm. a positive experience. Like, I want that to be really clear. Like this, this should be a positive experience. Like I would say that the universe, it is predisposed towards love as a, as a force. Mm -hmm. And so 
so yeah, there's a lot of really good stuff and it can be a lot of fun. And, and certainly I love it. So, so one of the things that I really enjoy that you're talking about is there, there's the mental health aspect of it, because especially like I I've done a little bit of studying religion, like they were give, doing exorcisms on people that just had like bipolar disorder, like not, not yeah. surprisingly yeah. not too long ago nowadays. Yeah if they want to do like a quote unquote exorcism, like there's a whole process and mental mm-hmm. vetting and all that stuff. So I like the idea that you're saying, Hey, like there's this spiritual side that you can embrace, but make sure you're, you're good first. Like don't use it as a way to get good. So I, I really enjoy that. That's a nice balance of, you know, kind of a newer approach to it and still like that spiritual approach. But I also love that you want to help people and you, you made that into what you do, correct? Like you yeah, do workshops yeah. and like, tell me a little bit about that. So I, I do, basically I, I see myself as, as a, as a guide for people, you know? And so I do kind of a range of things. I do kind of, there's three sort of trajectories that I work with people. One is I do offer psychic readings and then I do you know, my intuitive coaching, which is using kind of like some of the traditional coaching stuff, but then also, of course, I'm bringing in the psychic stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I do offer workshops and the workshops are actually, they're kind of more like for, for organizational stuff for different agencies and things. And so I've done, you know, my, my interfaith understanding, my six degrees of separation workshop, and I've done loving the unlovable, which is about internalized capitalism and mental health. And then I've also done like the power of words, which is about intentional writing and kind of rewriting the stories that we tell ourselves and changing how we use words. Mm -hmm. And then I've also done a workshop that's based on a memoir that I wrote that's about resilience and, and creating superhero resilience. So that's another reason I knew we, we would get along. So (laughs) you you, you made the X-Men reference. I was like, okay, all right. We were already pretty good now. Now. And now you're going to tell me that That, that's so cool. Like I, I love the idea of, bringing in different ways of thinking and different ways of, of viewing the world. And like, if, if my job brought in a psychic to like, even like just to do a workshop, I think it'd be the coolest thing ever. I don't think my job ever will because my job is not, not the most fun in those kind of regards, but <laughs> like, so you do a lot of organizational stuff. You do your readings. Do you do like individual work too, besides the readings or is it purely just like uh, company based? Well, no, this is like the, the readings are, are for just anybody. I mean, like anybody can, can work with me with that or the coaching, (laughs) the, the workshops are the, are the only thing that I have done with, with organizations, actually. They're like my, I don't know how, how you want to put this, the way that, the way that they've worked at least so far has been very like traditional. Mm -hmm. As far as like professional development, that kinds of things. Although I did do a series recently with a behavioral health organization and they wanted me to also do a Q and a about psychic stuff because Mm -hmm. I learned through them that more and more clients are coming in and wanting to talk about that kind of stuff. So that was very interesting because that's something that I didn't know that people would feel comfortable even talking yeah. about that because with my clients generally they're like I don't want to tell my therapist like they have me and they have their therapist and they're like I don't want to tell my therapist this stuff I, I can't I just want to talk to you about it I can't imagine it like do so I'm trying to like I'm trying to work this in my head like because I can't <laughs> yeah. even imagine like going to see like somebody like you, my because I would go in and be like is she gonna read my mind is she gonna know what I'm gonna ask <laughs> I was literally writing out questions before we, like, as we started talking, just, I was like, what if she figures out my questions beforehand? (laughs) Like, so for you, like, what are some of the conceptions that you you get when you meet somebody for the first time? Well, yeah, stuff like that. I usually use a lot of people be like, har, 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 give me the lottery numbers. And I'm like, do you think I would be working this if (laughs) I need the lottery numbers? Like, that's fair (laughs) I mean and and so the thing that I always tell people is that you know I don't read the future Mm -hmm. because and and I would say that a legitimate psychic will never 
read the future. They will never claim to know your future. Mm-hmm. Will they actually? Yes, <laughs> they probably will. Like the stuff that happens in your reading probably will come true. Okay. Like, like nine times out of 10. However, there's that that one time that it won't. And the reason is that we have choice. Mm-hmm. And And when I say we, I mean every single person on this planet has choices. And there are forces that are outside of our control that are acting upon us at all times. And so there's so many different variables. There's so many different things that could happen. So yeah, have I, like, do I know things? Yes, I do. Mm-hmm. Like, can I have, can I have access to what's going to happen here? Yeah, I, I do. But am I going to tell you? No, <laughs> I'm not. And I'm the not, reason yeah. is you won't do what you're supposed to do. If you already, if you know that it's going to happen, you won't necessarily do the things that you need to do in order to make it happen. And then it, that it might not. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that I I prefer, like, if I'm going to go see a psychic, I've never had a psychic reading, like, to be totally honest, I've spoken to psychics. I love having conversations and I love learning and I try and be very open minded. I know that if I sat down at a psychic reading, I wouldn't want them to be like, hey, you're going to do this tomorrow. I'm going to be like, watch me, watch me not do it. Yeah, I'd rather, exactly. I'd rather sit down with somebody who's like, hey, this is the energy you're giving off, or this is what you're attracting. If yeah. you want to change something, if you want, you know, if you want to just be a, feel a little bit lighter, here's some things you can do or something along those lines. I think that that's, I think that that's really just the better option for me, especially. Yeah. I mean, like that's, and I would say that the best psychics are like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, every psychic that I, am friends with and would recommend to other people is like that they'll say you know you're they're not gloom and doom Mm -hmm. they're going to tell you things that are hopeful they're going to be affirming they're going to give you what you need you know not necessarily what you want but what you need what's best for you in the in the direction that you want to go you know, the, the kinds of readings, I mean, like it's, people always come for, for the same kinds of things. They come for career, they Mm -hmm. come for finances, they come for relationship, they come for, you know, parenting, something like that. So it's always those kind of like a big life change, you know, something like they're at a crossroads moment. Almost like getting permission for it. Yeah. Well, and that's one of the things is like, is getting permission. Like, should I do this should I start this business? Mm -hmm. Should I marry this person? Should I divorce this person? You know, like, like, should I have a kid? Should I, you know, these kinds of questions. And, and so what I find is I'll find the ways in which people get in their own way Mm -hmm. and I'll find the next right step for them to take for what they're wanting Hmm. and oftentimes i'll also you know give them permission like i'll see like okay this is the thing that's coming up and how it plays out like it's it's hard to explain unless you unless you go through it like like it's it's it would be easier to explain if you had been because it because how the information comes up it's sometimes very strange like we'd be talking and then i'd be like hey so i'm just seeing this picture of mm-hmm. this or like this idea keeps on popping into my head or I feel like I have to tell you this and then you'd be like oh you know and and you'd be kind of like oh yeah that is the thing that, that I've been worried about or this is the thing that I've been thinking about and and then you know lo and behold over the next year sometimes that it can take that long you'll find these things will unfold that's, which is wild that is why that was i was gonna say that was wild i don't, I don't i'm not, not now i'm uncomfortable so i i do have to ask though like are you purely in person or like do people like zoom in with you and they're like hey like this like yeah both are, yeah okay because you know with technology nowadays it's so much it's like you said earlier you know i, I grew up you know before the internet as well don't don't tell anybody because i'm still only 20 years old as so <laughs> what i tell everybody but anywho so like, I remember if you wanted to learn something or connect with someone, A, you had to Encyclopedia Britannica. That was like the yep. oh, shit. Yep. You needed it. 
you needed 42 different volumes of it just to get yep. one letter or you had to use the phone book and yep. i can't even imagine opening the phone book and being like all right psychic 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 but i i like the idea that like you're you're doing zoom and obviously it makes podcasting so much easier i'm a big fan but it, yeah. that's so cool. So we are getting towards the end of our interview. And at the end of all of our interviews, we do like to play a little game, if you're interested, where we do some rapid fire questions. I try and tailor okay. questions to who I'm speaking with. And there's just a couple that I'm just going to throw at you. And okay. whatever comes to mind first, which I feel like should probably be easy for you. <laughs> no cheating. <laughs> no, no, no using spirit. All right. No cheating. <laughs> all right. So let's see. What is a significant moment in your psychic journey that stands out to you? Oh, I mean, probably that that awakening vision that I had. Oh. It's probably the biggest one. Yeah. What is one piece of advice for someone navigating that psychic crossroads moment where it's like, hey, now's the time? Wait, to you mean like to... Like if somebody was like... Like if they were going to start this journey... I would say the most important thing is to meditate. And the second thing would be to find your mentor. I like both of those things. I'm a big fan of meditation. Even I just taking that five minutes sometimes to just clear your head, some of the most powerful things Dude. you can do for yourself. What is a powerful word or phrase that holds special meaning for you? Oh my God. I would say divine intention. I like that. I really like that. And what is one of your favorite workshop topics that you facilitate? I I really like to do the the six degrees of separation, the interfaith workshop. And I also really like to do the loving, the unlovable, the, the internalized capitalism one. Yeah. Yeah, I like that, especially as somebody who who tends to use words poorly and do a little self-deprecating humor. My my wife constantly calls me out on, on self-deprecating humor because it's definitely not a defense mechanism that I'm just trying to make the joke before somebody else does. But anyway, so I, I like the idea of how powerful your words are, and it's something that I personally need to work on, so... I appreciate you yeah, mentioning it. Now, for you, though, if somebody wanted to get your services or learn more about you or connect with you, like whether it's social media, whatever it is, how would people do that? Yeah, um, you can find me on my website that has all the things, which is just alexisdonkin.com. Um, I also have a newsletter, which is like it's a huge archive of resources, and that's alexisdonkin.substack.com. And then I'm on TikTok. I'm on Instagram. I love DMs. Like, you know, I'm very, this conversation is a mirror of what I am like in every place. This is just me. So yeah, happy to answer questions and respond to questions and all of that good stuff. And then if you do want to work with me, the easiest way is to just do an ask a psychic session, which is short. It's 20 minutes. It's 30 bucks. And it's good for one question. So this is a good, like, we'll, we'll chat, we'll get one question answered, your next right step, you'll feel, you know, assurances or affirmation of where you're going and, or you'll get a plan of action of what to do. And then if you mention this podcast, I will give you a witchy chat day, which is just like, you know, sometimes things come up after your session. And so you want to like check in and be like, Hey, Alexis, this thing happened. Or like, you know, I have questions about this. What do you think? And so that is a really sweet little. Oh, that thank you. you so much. We appreciate that. I feel like my wife's going to be messaging you before the podcast even comes out. <laughs> <laughs> so you may be hearing from her, but Alexis, this was fantastic. I had such a blast. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks so much for having me. It was fun. It was a pleasure and it was definitely fun. So hopefully <laughs> we'll have you back on again. Sounds good to me. Thank you so much. Have a good rest of your day. You too.